I'm Rob Lacuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby, here with Emmy winner Lucia Agnello, who is nominated for a DGA award for her pilot episode of Hacks called There Is No Line. And Lucia, I fell in love with Hacks almost instantly because not only because of the performances of the cast, particularly Emmy Magnet, Jean Smart, but because of the relationship between Deborah and Ava. I just found that so fascinating. They're not really fond of each other, but they're, you know, their walls are up, but there are, you get glimpses that maybe we're headed somewhere. I'm wondering when directing a pilot like this one, how mindful are you of telegraphing where their relationship might be headed so we feel like we're embarking on some kind of journey with these people? Yeah, I mean, I think the the thing that we were really trying to aim for um, in the pilot, especially, is really establishing who they were before they met. Um, just because we wanted it to be actually the most exciting moment is like, oh, they finally meet, and we already know their points of view so strongly that by the time they actually get in a room together, you kind of already can imagine um, that they would have sparks in in whatever way that that whatever that means to you. Um, so for us, just the idea that they both kind of were struggling in their own ways, but were also both, both quite headstrong and both quite, you know, sharp and vicious in their own ways. The idea that they would be then having a tete-a-tete -tete and sitting across from each other um, in that scene towards the end of the pilot, um, it was for us like, you know, wanting to kind of establish that in, in terms of like, okay, now this is, now can you even imagine what's gonna happen? Um, but also not wanting to te telegraph too much where we're going with the story, which, um, you know, we're still, I think, literally in the middle of, of telling right now, you know, still where, what what does this relationship mean to, to the other person? And what does that mean? You know, how does it affect them? So, you know, we're still, I think, in the midst of telling that that longer story. And so hopefully it wasn't telegraphed too much. I mean, like you said, they they don't necessarily like love each other upon first meeting, but you can tell that there's something that they each appreciate about the other person and, and can see, especially Deborah can, I think, see a bit of herself in Ava, somebody who's kind of unfairly cast aside and and, you know, but she also, on the other hand, wants to prove to Ava that, uh, you know, she isn't a hack and that she really deserves this girl's respect. And so I think it's kind of a, a two-parter reason for why she does decide to hire Ava, despite the disastrous interview. Yeah, I actually, what most I found most compelling was that there was something, that, that vulnerability that was underlying for both of them, it felt like they kind of almost needed each other, but just hadn't really realized that yet. And I just wonder, um, is it difficult or challenging to have actors portray vulnerability authentic, authentically? Like it, it, because sometimes it comes off pat or it comes off maybe insincere. I'm just wondering if that was something that was front of mind when you were first putting this pilot together. Yeah, I mean, I think you can tell, like, you know, especially with Deborah's anger um, when she finds out that her dates are, are under threat. You know, when somebody comes off with anger, I think that that actually is the biggest sign of insecurity um, versus like a moment where they're kind of sad and maybe giving a sadder face. So, so I think there's different ways, at least that I attempted to show the insecurity and vulnerability of both characters. I think for Ava, the fact that she like pulls her car over in the middle of the street to kind of um, try to berate somebody into essentially hiring her also is a kind of like desperation that I think says a lot. So I think it's maybe important to show different ways that you can show that somebody is vulnerable and, and, and insecure and in, in a spot where they need help or they need another person which ultimately of course you know this the show is a love story between the two of them and so for them to be able to to kind of um fill that role or, or have a loving relationship and you know for each other is in and of itself the true thing that they need even though they think they need a job or they think they need more their dates back or, or whatever but what they really need is somebody you know kin a, a kindredness with with another person who challenges them um, and ultimately makes them a better person but you know also makes the work better. So um, yeah, there's a lot at play. Wow. <laughs> there is a lot at play. And then of course, that being said, the show is really funny. Like it's really funny. And yet it spotlights these two women in the twilight, or well, one of them in the twilight of her career, obviously, which can mm -hmm. be quite bittersweet, even melancholy. Um, so then what's the key to unlock the right tone? Because 
if it's too funny and too uh, madcap, it diminishes the emotion. But then if it's too serious, it wastes their talents as, you know, as, com as comedic artists. So how, how did you toggle that properly so that it was just right? I mean, that's something even now we're still, we still every day are, are trying to like, just bring in the margins of, of the drama and the comedy. Like sometimes that we leave a lot on the, on the edit room floor of stuff that's really, really funny, but is it just a little too broad and sketchy? And is this just too, is this dramatic or is this melodramatic? And, and, you know, bringing in the edges so that it does feel like it's part of a whole is, it, it like isn't something that necessarily like it's in the tiniest little choices and of course in some bigger choices um but it is something that is constantly being tweaked that we don't actually even always know when we're writing um or even when we're edit, uh, directing it's sometimes in the edit or also sometimes we'll edit a scene this is how we feel about it but then in the context of the larger episode or sometimes even the larger season we'll then be like oh now that we've kind of gone a little more dramatic in this one maybe the next one doesn't need to be quite so much or do this need actually one more joke should we go back and and re-edit that so it's it's a constantly shifting um tone that um you know we're, we're yeah always trying to figure out what is the right tone and i think also it's kind of interesting and exciting when you slightly deviate from that tone and i think that that's also something that we want to continue to do um with our storytelling on the show is is not just replicate exactly what you experienced in season one we want to give you the the heart of it in the same of course tone but we also want to stretch our muscles just a little bit and give you something maybe you didn't see coming but that's the exciting part is is figuring it out together and that's something that paul um and jen and i you know truly do all day long yeah um i mean obviously that you got the tone right because people have really responded to the show in such a positive way when you won the emmy a few months ago in september last year um you were visibly shocked you Aww. thanked Jean and hannah uh, the cast and crew for making something that we all needed to escape at that time, which is so true. And I, I love the way you genuinely was that you were so awestruck. Uh, just looking back, uh, what what's the first thing that comes to mind uh, from that moment up on stage when you won the Emmy? Blacking out, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think it was quite obvious. I really genuinely had absolutely, I did not think that that was going to happen. And um, you know, when Paul and Jen and I won for writing, we had a very, very small bit kind of plenty, like thought that we thought of that day of this unrolling this thing, but we hadn't actually rehearsed anything or, or done anything beyond that. Um, and, you know, so we had a, like a vague idea, like, okay, if something happens, this is generally what it is. We were very, very shocked. But then um, as soon as I got off stage, then all of a sudden, like, well, if it happened once, it could happen a second time. Like, I could win for directing. So I turned to, to my husband, Paul, and I said, well, what if I win? Which is honestly the first time the thought even crossed my mind was a moment after winning writing. And he said, improvise. <laughs> and so <laughs> I did. I improvised. Luckily, I had done improv comedy for the better part of my 20s. So, um, yeah, I really... I genuinely was very much, um, very much in the moment. And it was, it was just genuinely like, I was so touched and it was exciting because, you know, like it does mean to an extent that like people have connected with the show and especially when the show came out, cause we wrote it and made it and it came out all, you know, in the heart of the pandemic. And um, there's a little bit of a disconnect, I think when you aren't really out in the world and like, you know, you, you hear from people, you know, of course, that they're like, oh, I really like the show. And you're like, well, that's so sweet and lovely. But to kind of have some kind of perspective that like it's enough people really related to it that that they would want to honor the show is really it's really it was very overwhelming. It also felt a little Truman show -y where I was like, me? <laughs> it is. So it, there was a lot there's a lot going on. And um, I was also jet lagged because I had just come back from my wedding a couple of days earlier from it that was in Italy. So I was just out of it. I blacked, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> it was cool. And you ended with saying, I love everyone. And on that note, <laughs> we love hacks. And thank you for your time. We'll bring you back shortly. Thank you.